Hi, everybody. My name is Jim Penfill, and it is my great pleasure to welcome Jan de Bont. even, if anything, more beloved, uh, obviously a classic. When did the three of you know what you had? I mean, did you did it feel like something special as you were making it, or when you're in the thick of it, are you just trying to survive production and have no idea? Um, no, I knew we had something very early on. And at, at, at the moment I saw Keanu uh, and Sandra working as a team, and doing <laughs> Most of the stunts themselves, which is so great, that so that the actions, the, the reactions of them are based on real reactions because they have to respond to what they were doing, and that makes it so great and so uh, relatable. And I think that's why, uh, and also the fact that there's a lot of fun lines in the movie, <laughs> and that this basically non-stop and this real action. There's no CCI, nothing. It's all yeah. real. So, so Keanu and Sandy, how about you? Uh, when, when you were making it, did you feel like it was something special? Did you know what you had? <laughs> uh, we knew we were doing something wacky. <laughs> So I, I was just happy to be alive at the end of the day. And, uh, I mean, I, I was new to the whole game, so I, I wasn't aware of what was happening or what felt right or what was not supposed to feel a certain way. But I was just, you're just in it. And it is, as Jan said, it, it was real. And when we were smashing into things, we were smashing into those things. So <laughs> we were given the benefit of, you know, in real time, and I don't, you don't get that much anymore. So I think as an actor, and it was, I was a newbie, you know, I was behind the wheel, wanted everyone to be safe. Um, it was just, it was special. It was special. And not even just in retrospect, but when, when we were in it, 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 it felt really genuine people. Well, going back to the origins of it, you know, Jan, this was, you would obviously been a hugely successful DP, but this was your first studio feature as a director. So how did you get the job and what were your initial conversations like with the studio in terms of you pitching your idea of how you were going to approach this? Um, I was working at Paramount at the time and on, on a project to direct and uh, I found this in, in the, basically the ones that were never made, that would never be made by Paramount, which we said I didn't know. But I thought there was there were so many possibilities in that movie that I could really see this is exactly the type of movie I want to make. Is where everything happens nonstop and people are tied together, they're really close together all the time, and they have to relate to each other, and that is that you barely you have in the movie. Also I felt like um, that I could do a lot of things for real, that's the real thing, because I, I didn't want to do things in the studio and and and, and, and film it uh, on in, in stages, I wanted to be all on real roads, real speed, real fast, and real dangerous. <laughs> and, real dangerous. And, and really, even the, the, the bus goes on two wheels, it goes on two wheels. That's no <laughs> but when the, the, it goes down an off ramp, and yes, it hit all the cars because they're too close. <laughs> And when she drives towards a one-way street towards the traffic, she starts yelling, get out of the way, get out of the way. And that feels, and because they had to get out of the way, <laughs> we'll see. So that was, that, to me, that was all, uh, I had so much fun making that movie. 
I, I hope that he had that too. But. And you needed a woman behind the wheel to really make it successful. <laughs> I have to say one thing before we continue is that we met outside um, just a second ago when I saw them for the first time in 30 years. And I was, when I saw the movie here, the biggest one, I've never been so proud of those two actors. Because what they did for me and quite often unnatural to them what they had to do is just unbelievable. But the relationship that those two created together is absolutely amazing. And seeing it back on the on the screen tonight, it was so real. They were absolutely perfect. All the emotions were right, all the laughter was right, all the smiling, the little smoothing. <laughs> it was really, really cool. And, and I, I had to tell them that how great they both were. I mean, I, I, was, I realized more now how great you guys were than at the time, I have to say, because I was busy. And, and, but now I really think, oh shit, they're so good. <laughs> the chemistry between the two of you is just incredible in this movie. Um, what do you remember about the first time the two of you met and was there like sort of an instant connection? There was a folding chair. There was a paper plate. Oh yeah, the paper plate. Uh -huh. Yeah, the audition. That was the steering wheel. I was handy. <laughs> <laughs> I had Keanu, Jan, a carpeted floor, a folding chair, and a paper plate. All my acting classes just all came together <laughs> and went out the window. <laughs> um, I mean, look, I again, I was the new kid on the block and I was, I was, you know, it's, it's nerve wracking. I remember arriving there, I remember the car I drove, I remember what I was thinking, I remember the door I walked in, I remember the room was kind of dark. You guys had it dark. Was <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, it just, you know, I, I was happy to be there. I was excited. I didn't think I'd be getting the job, but the only reason I got this job was because I was fought for. That's the only reason. Well, other people turned it down, and then... <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes, there were other no, no, people. No, no, no. There were other people ahead of me. I yeah, 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 but they were not. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you made you, them think they I, were gonna the have the job. I saw you. I knew that you would be the, the driver. But you saw I me totally after you would be the one, two, and three couldn't do it. And then you saw me in the dark room. <laughs> on the following chair with poor Keanu. He's like, this is what it was like working with Keanu. was just like, who's gonna shut up? <laughs> I'll be quiet, go ahead. <laughs> Well, Keanu, the story is that you actually turned this movie down initially, so what were you resistant to when it was first offered to you, and what ultimately convinced you to do it? I don't remember. <laughs> was it me? Oh. It had to be. Uh, I don't know. There's a bus, and it has to, can't go below 50 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> but then I read the second draft, the next draft, and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, okay. Uh, getting the training, and it could be fun. And I met this mad genius, and I was like, oh fuck, man, I know this is an auteur, this is a director, this is a person with a vision, this is someone who has a passion for the story. And, um, you know, I was at the time, I guess what struck me was the cinematography from Die Hard. And that, <laughs> that, whoever shot that, I was like, fuck oh, yeah. And then, you know, I was just kind of coming into that. And so, as more of it, as it became from just the abstract kind of, here's the premise, which I was like, <laughs> to, uh, to then kind of 
seen what was being looked going after, which was this kind of action, which was the humor, which was this kind of heightened reality to me. But then when I met Jan and his passion for it, which was, I mean, you're, you're even saying it here, like it's real and I want to shoot it and I want this to be, I was like, fuck yeah. You know, where's the technical advisor? I'm going to start learning how to shoot guns again and let's make be a SWAT dude and we're going to save the world. You know, and then I met, you know, Sandra. No, you meant like, like there were three others. <laughs> You know, I think I that think, is why I love him. No, I think that's like probably some studio shenanigans. You know, right? It's like you were like, this is your first movie. They're not gonna let you yeah, fucking yeah. pick your actor. Wait, though. was it the studio or were there the studio shenanigans? <laughs> The studio is like, you know, we like this person and this person, and Jan probably went, yeah, 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 and then started, kept auditioning people and kept like making, going into production and like probably got them to a place where it was like, oh yeah, well, my choice. Who's directing the movie? All that matters is I was his choice. <laughs> I still remember when Keanu came in and this is really long hair still at the time. I had to play a cop, and the studio was looking at me and, and asking, like, what do you think about his hair? <laughs> and he said, his hair looks pretty good. <laughs> and, and, but I knew that that was going to be an issue. But I think you censored yourself, because, like, a week later, he came back, and his hair was totally short. And everyone was shocked. What happened to your hair? <laughs> I, mean, man, I was playing a SWAT guy, man. I was like, I got a worm cut on the side, I got a fade. And everyone just went like, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> like, you know, you're talking about like being like, I haven't gone through this experience. For me, it was like, you know, I heard these whispers, he's cut his hair. Why did he cut his hair? His hair's too short. It doesn't, what? And like, I felt this like kind of pervading and I was just like, too late, man. Then they're like, you have to let your hair grow. You can't cut it again. You can't. <laughs> actually, once you had your hat that short, you actually became him. You became the character. And that was so fantastic. And I, that's why I so absolutely, absolutely no, no, absolutely, I definitely didn't want you to get grow your hair. Because that would, it would be, also would make you look too relaxed. I want you to wear tents. I, mean, I don't want to shake your hair all the time. <laughs> that makes this movie great is that obviously you've got the two right people in the leads but also the casting is so careful in all the supporting roles I mean like all the people on the bus you know I think a lot of directors tendency would just be like oh those are just going to be random extras or something but you clearly were very careful about how you cast each of those roles talk a little bit about your kind of approach going into casting that ensemble the one thing I know for sure that I felt to as it was absolutely necessary to find actors that you believe would ever would ever have ridden on a bus or would drive regularly on a bus. And normally you don't find those because most actors, especially well-known actors, they are driven. And so I, I, and, and I really hated to have actors that really couldn't imagine what how boring it can be to be on a bus because you, they were sitting on a bus for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and and people who normally ride those buses they know what it feels like and they behave that way they behave in the right way and it didn't want actors to start acting like like they were regular uh, bus uh, riders so it, I spent a lot of time finding different people and different like Alan Rock and a lot of they all were really just right for that part for some lines or for some reaction I needed but really I felt like these people really would ride buses they would be I totally believe them and, and the audience should believe them that was key too and what was the experience like actually being on this bus for six weeks I mean was it hot was it claustrophobic was it you know, <laughs> you're nodding so yes it was a lot of carbon monoxide that oh. sat in the room with us um, it was it was 
what Jan was saying, you, you felt everyone, by the end, we were all, you know, in each other's business. And, I mean, you had such um, absolutely different walks of life, but they all needed to be in that place to make the story believable. Um, you know, Hawthorne, who was the, the bus driver, I mean, that face and when he gets shot, and then Beth Grant, who we run over, oh, she's amazing. She took it like a chair. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you gotta get out of the bus. <laughs> um, Alan, Rook, you know. I mean, I know we had succession. <laughs> um, but it was, it was just, everyone was just so kind. Carlos, Simone, like, we were just stuck on the bus. We you still remember all the boxes. names, it's so great. <laughs> I to think of like that that's the group that you know I can remember but it was it was like yeah I was I was just happy to be there yeah a fun bit of trivia is that the old guy on the bus was like a Disney animator who worked on Fantasia <laughs> crazy yeah Milton Kwan there you go <laughs> um, well tell me a little bit about wait there wasn't just one bus no, it was not really one bus. We had 11 buses. There's 11 buses. The bus that went on the two wheels. And then also, we're dealing with like a master cinematographer here. So like the handrails were actually uh, tracks for the... For I did I think cameras, yeah. bungee cameras. Yeah, I, I counted 22 cameras once in the front, so I mean... <laughs> in front of us would be like 22 cameras. Like, there'd be one camera for like Sandra's hands. There'd be like one camera for when I turn. There was like another camera. Here. There was cameras above here. There was cameras down there. No cameras down there. <laughs> Well, tell me a little bit more about this, like, logistically shooting these bus scenes. I mean, you're on, like, I'm assuming a closed section of... Oh, and you destroyed. How many camera bodies did you destroy? How many cameras I destroyed? Yeah. Like, just five. How many? <laughs> Sorry. But, but like logistically, how do you even begin to mount something like this where you've got a bus and you know all of those cars we're looking at, they're all yours. I mean yeah. all the cars on the freeway were all um, driven by um, how you call this red driver? It's like a specialty driver that we did uh, knowing for a full well basically they always work on movies. So they're very, very disciplined in being at the right place all the time. So that suddenly the car that is at, um, in front of the bus is not changed uh, from a white car into a red car. It's always, they all know that places. Then in the morning, we have sessions where everybody make drawings, and that car is there, and then he will pass, and then we will hit that car, and then you turn, and you try to miss it, but then you get also hit. I mean, the, those things we do every morning and make a plan for, for every scene. And with the buses, there are so many of them because, you know, when you're in a bus, Inside, you can't. It's, it would be too bright outside. Likewise, so all the windows were filtered for the interior shots. When the cameras are outside, all the, those lenses. And there's a different bus for filming from the outside in. And there's another bus, another bus, just to film her and him. And that was like where the, there's a big. We built a, a, a like a platform in front of her, and so. We basically like three feet away from her and could follow all the movement, all the responses in that particular bus. And that goes on and on. <laughs> and Sandy, are you, how often are you actually driving in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> you honestly think they're going to let me get behind the wheel? <laughs> no, I mean, the fun part was that I was at the at the helm of the bus, but in the back there was someone driving or on the roof, someone was driving and I was being careened into whatever Jan felt I needed to smash into that day. And, and, um, but never, never. I, I did get my Santa Monica bus driver's license. Um, I did. <laughs> It's not something that, that 
you know, nobody, nobody ever can let me drive. But it, you felt like it's actually better that way because you didn't know what was coming and you felt the impact. And I think on the poster, you know, you don't really see me, but you see this light image of somebody behind the wheel and it's one of our stunt guys in my dress <laughs> and like a little wink. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a jump. That wasn't it a jump. Was Jan, you mentioned them doing a lot of their own stunts, and you're working on this movie with Gary Himes, who's a kind of legendary stunt coordinator. He did a lot of De Palma's movies. It's actually, his son is actually the baby in The Untouchables going down the thing. Um, so talk a little bit about working with him, and, and um, you know, what were some of the more dangerous or hair-raising things that the two of you had to do on this movie? Me? Gary Himes is just amazing. He's a wonderful person, a uh, legendary stunt performer and choreographer. And, um, I just feel really grateful. He, he really was, um, I mean, working with Jan and the whole idea of putting me wherever I could actually be. So there was another bus that was a little higher. <laughs> um, so sitting on like a car with lots of wires hanging on and just being able to uh, actually be there. Um, he was really supportive and uh, just, yeah, it's fucking, and also, yeah, getting to drive Glenn Plummer with him. <laughs> awesome, Glenn Plummer. And, uh, and uh, yeah, ripping the door off. Um, that was fun, kind of one of those days where they had the Tonka toys, the matchbox cars, like on the 105, we filmed on the 105, and it was just like, you know, Gary's like, okay. Oh, and also Brian Smurfs was working on that. Um, but yeah, it was just like, okay, Keanu, this is your route, this is the color of the car, and this is what you're gonna do. And, um, but just where he was able to, I. My take on it is if I can be there, I want to be there because it's a connection to, in the storytelling to have the character there. You don't have to cut away in a different way, you know. Um, and Gary Himes was just, he was like, full go, be safe, but let's do it. And um, I really appreciate that. Change and also, it was very safe, you know, you know that he, when he said you could, it could be done, you could do it. The, uh, the thing when, when, when Jack was under the bus with that little cart thing with the little wheels, you know, at 25, 30 miles an hour, that gets a little sketchy. <laughs> it's like, then they put like another wire on it, so it was like the thing, and then they were like, maybe we don't book Keanu in there. At the <laughs> so, hey, Brian. Uh, I got to do some of it, but it's... Wasn't there that day on the bus, though, when when they were cr actually crashing through all the cars on the street. Yeah. And I remember like, we were a little under-informed. <laughs> <laughs> like, like yeah, did that thing, we were all on the bus, and then we were driving down, it was like by San Diego or something, we were getting to set by the ocean, and we're driving, and all of a sudden we're actually hitting cars. <laughs> boom, boom, and everyone on the bus, there. People were like screaming. Ah, ah, ah. It's like, the reactions were great. <laughs> sequence that got a huge reaction here in the audience tonight, which is the bus jump over the missing part of Freeway. Uh, that, as I understand it, was not something that was in the original script. It was actually your idea. Talk a little bit about conceptualizing that, and then how do you actually execute something like that? Um, I was actually driving on the freeway, and uh, when I discovered actually that section missing in the, in the freeway, what I were working so on, and I thought, God, that would be a fantastic, great ending of that, or at least the high point of that, uh, of that freeway sequence. And um, then I started to talk to um, 
different stunt people and how can we do that? How fast do we have to go to reach a certain distance? <laughs> and um, uh, so we, we, we took all that weight out of the bus, make it as light as possible. Um, um, we had a driver in who really was kind of not sitting in his chair, but was hanging in the chair because the, bound, the, the landing would be, could be very bad for you. It hurts. <laughs> I love you, I'm the bomb. <laughs> this might be bad for you. <laughs> Maybe we don't tell them so we get reaction. <laughs> So we had, we had this one bus was made specially for that stunt, and when we actually were ready to shoot it and um, film it, and I, just, I was trying to really be really nice to the driver, to the stuntman, and, and I, I could tell him it's really important that you go really at a good speed, otherwise you're never going to make it. <laughs> And he, he, he did, oh yeah, 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 oh, I can do it. And, and so when the, the first time that we filmed it, there was a lot of cameras, several cameras down below, and in the bus on, uh, in the air. And then he, he got scared at the last moment on the ramp, and he started slowing down. And unfortunately, he didn't land on the other side, but he landed on seven cameras right below, <laughs> all placed to film the, <laughs> him coming over. So that bus was destroyed, and, and we, we didn't, I, did, I said, don't tell the studio, don't tell the studio. <laughs> and so we said, can we find another bus? I can you guys, the, 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 the special effects uh, construction guy, and, uh, and maybe we can do it on, on a weekend, and we don't, we don't, we don't, uh, Tell anybody we're gonna do it. <laughs> There's only like a very small crew, just a camera crew, and and then um, uh, maybe we we can sneak it in on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> and which we did. And then the guy, the same guy, and said he wants to actually he wants to do it again, the same part as the driver. I said, are you really sure? I said because the speed is important. And, and, and he said, yeah, I do it, I do it. And so he, he then went so fast, he went much further than, <laughs> than we ever needed. And basically, on the other side, there were cameras far away, because he then hit head on. But at least we had to show It just dawned on me why you wanted me in the role. Because if you killed me, I wasn't a big actor. <laughs> it just dawned on me. It would have been, you know, actor dies in start in a Keanu Reeves movie. <laughs> Another scene that got a huge audience reaction is the scene at the end of the airport sequence where the two of you, you know, are on the thing coming out from under the bus and slide across. Talk a little bit about what you remember about shooting that scene. I remember it very well. <laughs> See, I had this dress that was very light, and I had a bodysuit underneath, and when we started rehearsing, I noticed that the velocity of the air would shoot the skirt over my head, the bottom part, so Keanu's job was for me the most important thing, which is just put your hands in a way that the skirt doesn't fly over my head. So not only did he have to do the stunt to keep me safe, he had to keep my, my integrity intact. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping things that didn't need to be seen on a 17 foot screen uh, hidden. So that's, you know, that's what I remember of that day. <laughs> Well, it's just, you know, shooting at the airport in general, I was watching this tonight, and I was thinking, this is a movie you could never make today. I mean, you're shooting at LAX with just all of this crazy stuff going on. I mean, well, how did you get the permission? What was, you know, 
What was that like? Um, I, I had seen that section of, uh, for, uh, of the uh, uh, extra runway they were building. It was also a brand new runway that uh, they extended. And I knew when they were going to use it, when it was going to open. So I had to ask permission to do it way before so that they can do the striping right and all the stuff right. And basically by telling them, we're going to make it look so beautiful, make the airport look so beautiful. <laughs> Great for, for, for people watching Wood and has a great and safe runways. And, <laughs> and, and basically, that's how you do it. I mean, that's how you do it. The movie, you know, has got like, it's got so much scale, it's so enormous, and yet it wasn't a huge budget movie for this kind of film. So, Jan, how did you maximize your resources and make this thing look so much bigger than it really was? Um, I think that had to do with the crew. Um, I had worked on a lot of movies and a lot of action movies, big movies, and um, I really liked that crew and I, I told them, listen, I mean, I have a small project and um, but it needs a lot of work, and are you really willing to do it for maybe less money, as much you would normally get on a bigger movie? And almost the whole crew said yes, which was like amazing, because a lot of the scenes you need a big crew for. You know? A lot of really, a lot of people, a lot of cameras, a lot of um, drivers. And, and that, I mean, that's why we kept the budget small. I mean, it's $31 million, which right now would, you could not make it for $150 million. But, but and that's the, we, 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 the only way we could get it, uh, to make it affordable and to make it really get. But also, I think what the, all those people in the crew, they were so great, they, all, they loved to work on that. They saw, we did those special things they had never seen themselves before. And they loved all the crashes and, 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 and those jumps. And, uh, and, and it, that's, that's pretty unusual, you know, that, you, that everybody can be so involved. And sometimes you ask them also, when they're a little bored, say, oh, hey, you know, come here, can you operate this camera? And, 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 but the moment you get them even more involved, they love that, you know? And I liked it too, because then I had another camera operator. <laughs> so it was, so it, it was, we had a fantastic crew, fantastic crew and a fantastic cast. And I couldn't have wished better, ever. Yeah, well, you can feel the movie that it's, it's one of those sort of like cinema alchemy things, where it's just the right person in every role, behind the camera, in front of the camera, and any one of them, being different, it might not be the classic that it is, you know, I mean, if you don't have Dennis Hopper as the bad guy, uh, I know, you know, I don't know if you've gone to Rivers Edge with him, and I'm just curious what your memories are of working with Hopper, um, I guess, on this on this movie, because I think, yeah, again, watching it with an audience tonight, every time he came on screen, everybody got so excited, he's just had so much fun in this thing. Yeah, he's brilliant, and so charismatic. He's so committed and he's, he's also a little nuts too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> uh, and just and we say that like he's a little nuts and but, like, but he's a total fucking pro. You know, he's a total pro. Um, you know, we had some ridiculous dialogue, and it was just awesome. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, you had to, you had to, you had to, you, you worked with the Hopper, too. <laughs> I, I, I did. I did. Yes. How'd that go for you? I was surprised at how, I don't like this word, but normal he was. <laughs> I mean, he might have been weird to you guys, but he was very sweet to me. He, he loved his art. He loved talking about art. He, collecting art, local artists, like he just, he was a man that just was, couldn't get enough. Like life was happening too fast and he just wanted more and more and more from it. And um, look again, I was in the company of, of such extraordinary people 
at such a you know early time in my career, and I and I I got everything, I got everything under one umbrella. Um, so to work with Dennis was, you know, you had to sort of shake it off and, and step into the role. But it, it there were times when you sort of had to pause, and his whole filmography would flash before your eyes. Um, he was very normal and sweet, just very respectful and kind. But he was threatening to blow me up, so maybe he was trying to like. <laughs> until you had already started shooting? Um, yeah, I, I knew him actually because I know his, uh, he's, he's a photographer, as you know, and I knew his photographs that we met before. And initially it didn't occur to me that it could be him. And then when it just started really working out, and, and, and we hadn't, hadn't found anybody else, then I thought, oh my God, Dennis should do it. And he did, he wanted it, they loved it. It's, uh, so it's basically like a last minute change with uh, Risa Prima Garcia, the casting director, and she helped to get him to do it. It was really great, I was really happy with that. Now, I'm curious with a movie like this, how challenging the editorial process was, because um, just keeping the momentum going, but also thinking about the stuff on the bus, and when you are like sort of servicing so many different characters, and there's any number of different reaction shots you could get, and as Keanu says, you've got a gazillion cameras on there, and all of this stuff. I mean, how challenging was the editorial process in this movie? Um, I like multiple cameras. Um, I like a lot of cameras. Um, but in the bus, actually not so much, because there, there wasn't space, you know? We had, Basically, I was operating most of the time those cameras. They were hanging from a bungee cord. Give me the fucking camera! <laughs> Give me the fucking camera! Like, I could have said that. <laughs> because all that, everything had to go fast. So. But, but it, it is so, it is, sometimes you need cameras that you can hide, but quite often the, 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 the intimate thing between them, there was always mostly with one or two cameras because I had to be really close uh, on the faces and it had to be intimate and, but, but the, the reactions to the, for the, for the people in the bus, they were all really specific. Men, I mean, the lines, they were specific for a specific moment in the movie. So it was all really kind of worked out. In, in, in advance a little bit because I, I once you start shooting you have no time to change things and we have to say now Alan you're going to do this and this and this and that and, and that is really great I mean they were so I mean amazed that nobody got sick in those but I said to let the passengers decide because fast stops go stop go stop and and going through corners and and fast turns and you know getting hit by cars on the side it's it's Nobody actually, they, they, were, they behaved like as if they were just regular bus riders. Now, the movie won a couple of Academy Awards for the sound, uh, and rightfully so. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your approach to the sound design and how that was used to kind of level up the intensity of the movie. I think uh, sound is one of the most Important at next to film, the soundtrack is and music are the most important part in filmmaking. I'm very special. I'm, I'm first of all I'm very, very happy with with Mark Mancini, the composer, which I think was brilliant. I found him at uh, at when he was doing some um, parts at. Uh, uh, of scores a little parts of other people's movies and he, 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 I listened to it and said, and I told him about my movie and I told him what I thought music should be and he totally fell in love with that daddy and basically, it's, I mean, that we talked non-stop all the time, what, what was good for this scene, what for good that scene, he, 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 um, he let me hear six ideas for songs. And it's the same for, for soundtrack too. I really wanted the, the sound be immersing in the whole theater that people would hear and feel almost through the sound the, the action that takes place on the screen. 
I wanted to do physical feel it with a lot of bass uh, speakers and multiple um, um, tracks and subtracks and we had I think like about 800 different tracks at one point for some of the scenes and all, the, all these things did work. Everything is used. It's not not. It's nothing is thrown away. I love uh, making this those the same I did in Twister. It's like creating soundtrack is so fun. It's so really almost as fun as making a movie. Now, <clears throat> Sandy and Keanu, I was wondering if you remember the first time you actually saw the finished film and what your reaction was. I do. I I had never been to. I guess maybe I was given an early cut for ADR or something like that. Um, and I remember watching it, and we were just talking about this in the back, and then I saw it, and once it got to the, almost the very end when the subway's going through the tunnel before it all, you know, breaks up, um, all of a sudden there were these really beautiful sketches of, like black and white sketches of the, the subway car and another nice, and I went, oh, that's interesting. Like, I thought, this is, <laughs> He's a director, and I was like, oh, this is like almost like a cartoon, you know? Like, it's like, maybe it'll be a cartoon, and then it comes out, and then it's back to real life. And I thought I was dumb and didn't understand the premise of the movie. And then later on, I uh, realized it was storyboards. I never asked, I never questioned it. And then when I saw it again, I was like, oh, okay, you know, like. Good job, Jan. You did a good job, Jan Um But that, I, I, it was thrilling, and it was again. You're just so excited to just be there, and you know, all these things came together, and I didn't hate what I saw of myself, which is, you know, talk to any actor. We just hate. Well, maybe some people like looking at themselves, but I, I, I wasn't horribly embarrassed, which is a really good thing. <laughs> well, this movie, you know, I don't know if people remember, I mean, if you, if you were there, it was such a phenomenon, like immediately. It's sort of the, the kind of film that I think everybody dreams of making, where it's a commercial success, it's an artistic success. The critics loved it. You won Academy Awards. I mean, did this movie, how did this change your lives and careers? Or... I think it would make it harder. In a way, because you think then about the next one, and how can you improve that? Can you make it even more interesting and more exciting? And that's when I did Twister. And that was <laughs> You're making it way too hard on yourself, I think, also. I think it's exciting that you can do the things, and I like to invent things and, and, and create new ways of filming. But uh, at one point, you have to say, wait a second. I mean, maybe sometimes you have to go back to basics a little bit again. But uh, I thought that is, once you make successful movies, it's really hard to keep going. It's really hard to really that the stress of making those movies is pretty big because it's so intense and there's so much action happening all the time uh, that as a director you are completely exhausted for a long time after the movie's over. So, uh, so it, 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 is, it is, my life did change. I mean, you get more projects, that's which is a fantastic thing, of course. But I also find it really you know, um, hard on myself to really come up with new ideas that I like, and because uh, I feel like I feel like as I, when I react, and then I feel like I am the audience. What would I want to see now? If I was the audience in the theater, I want to see this and I want to see that. And there's a lot of different views, and I wanted to show them all. You know, and that's the hard part <laughs> to show all those different feelings. What I think audience would like to see. Kiana, did you find that working on this movie informed your approach going on to things like the Matrix movies, the John Wick movies, because you, know, you talk about on this thing, you know, doing everything for real, and then you obviously have taken that to like a whole new level, especially in the John Wick stuff. I mean, did that start for you here? Uh, most certainly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, starting with Point Break, I guess that was my <laughs> And then working on 
Ground Speed, I'd like to give a shout out to the SWAT Technical Director, Randy Walker. Uh, and, uh, out. and um, yeah, so in terms of action, certainly, yeah. Well, you know, to wrap things up, I'm going to ask you a question. Oh, wait, yeah. we got to talk about Jeff Daniels. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how can we forget that? No, uh, uh, Jeff is actually, well, you all know who Jeff Daniels is, but he's like such a serious, great uh, professional actor. And I thought I needed him to kind of, because he was a little older, a little more experienced, I thought that would be really great against this to have him play against Keanu and, and, and Sandra, I, because I knew he would support them. And that is so important that they, that the three of them would work together. So ultimately I was ended up to be extremely happy with his, his performance. And there are some moments where, for instance, where actually many moments, but when he is in that house and he realizes that the red light goes on and he can see in his eye that this is the end, and it is. But it is, <laughs> but it is amazing that you can see that, that you can really, really perform in such a way that it makes, that makes it, audience makes it, makes it feel the same way. I don't know, I was just such a, I mean, I, at the time I was 30, you know, but uh, I was a little lipper snapper. And uh, Jeff is, uh, he was, it was just cool to, to have the scenes with him and to, to see his approach, um, his sense of humor, you know, um, and the way that he embodied the character and just, uh, you know, uh, there's one scene where I'm in the elevator and, and uh, Opera's character is going to shoot up and we're in our SWAT gear and uh, so they were going to have some blow the shotgun blast through the, the ceiling of the elevator. Got our stuff on. Uh, you know, he's like, we're staring, we gotta, we gotta look at it. We're like looking for the bad guy, where is he? <laughs> just before they get to do the thing, because they were gonna blast it up, he like looks at me and goes, I always say that it's gonna be okay, but just look away. <laughs> And so Jeff Daniels was like C, just about like all. Oh. Like, yeah. What was that story? You told me a story that where you fucked with Woody Allen. Like it was a brother Danny Rose. Is that it? Purple Rose of Cairo. Purple Rose of Cairo, where like he had to sing, and like he pretended not to be able to sing, <laughs> <laughs> just to fuck with him. <laughs> Sorry. And Joe Morton is just, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, the whole cat. It, it's just uh, top to bottom, incredible movie. And I guess, you know, my last question, which I'm sure you've been asked before, but I'm going to ask it anyway. You know, given the way audiences in the last few years have embraced movies like Maverick and XLF and stuff like that, has there ever been any talk of the three of you reuniting for Speed 3? Geriatric version. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be fast. <laughs> Retirement. <laughs> I think it would be 
different movie. <laughs> Well, it's, it's hard to ever be great to work with them. That's the difference. It's absolutely true. And I was listening to Jan when he was saying, talking about how, and I, I never even thought of this, how it became more difficult to make the movie you wanted to make after you have something like Speed because you're like, this idea, and the audience wants this, and I want to give the audience, it's, he's all in service to the audience. You know, and I'm sitting here going down memory lane and I've forgotten things. I'm like, oh God, that's right, that's right. But that's all, all these things happen because the crazy man in the greenish jacket over there, he's like, he's so soft and gentle today. And I'm like, that's not the man. <laughs> but he's the man who put the energy and the idea together and knew what the audience wanted. and demanded it from everyone and everyone stepped up to play. So what would that movie be that would make Jan's brain and brilliance happy? It would require a lot from everybody and I don't know if we're in an industry anymore that's willing to tolerate it um, and be brave enough to do it. Maybe, may, I could be wrong, but you know, you just listen to him talk about why he did what he did and where the camera was and I was such a novice. I didn't realize why things were there. I, Keanu remembers everything, every technical um, it's just, if he can't make his brain for the audience, then he's failed, it felt like. And I go, wow, we, I don't know what we could do that would be good enough for the audience. Yeah. Well, it would definitely be hard to improve upon him, and I think I speak for everybody when I say this was really one of the great movie-going nights of my life, and I really appreciate you all coming out.